No, let me work. Now, what I've got is measurements. for the trim pieces for the doors on the trailer. He's going to gag again. Fell down, boy. Sawdust. Anyway, so, yeah, today I'm going to measure and cut my trim pieces for the doors. For the, yeah, the outside trim pieces. Not the weather strip pieces that are going to go inside the door. That's going to be later. So, I don't even have the skin yet. So, so whenever I get the skin, these will already be pre-drilled, um, chamfered out, countershank with hit the screw heads. And um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I'll need the chamfer. You think I'll need to do that? Hey, Zig, come see. Say hi. Zig, come here. Come up here. Up this side. The other side. This side. Good boy. Good boy. I don't know. So, um, so yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I can't remember how I plan to do those screws. Either way, these trim pieces will be drilled, uh, cut, cut the length and drilled and painted. Uh, I'm going to paint these black. It'll just be like, it's going to be a charcoal gray skin, metal skin. And uh, I think the black trim will look just perfect. So let's get to see. Let's get to let's get to getting. So I need four twenty-eight and seven sixteenths. I've got to leave. Place my forty-fives. It's not accurate. <clears throat> you remember early on, early on, I said measure twice, cut once. Well, maybe measure three times, cut once. I don't know why, but. Why would I? I need 28 and 7 sixteenths. Why would I cut this an exact 24 inches? I don't know. I don't know, Z. I don't know. All right, I got a little bit of gnarl on there. Morning, everybody. Uh, all right, so we're going to continue on with uh, with the aluminum trim for the doors. Uh, this is for the outside of the doors. Once I get this figured out and see if this all works, uh, 
then I plan on buying my my metal siding for my uh, my skin. I'll call it you know the skin for the trailer. Uh, I'll I'll buy the skin for the trailer, put that on, and then use these to hold the skin on. Then I'll come back and work on the the trim for the uh, for the doors themselves. So. Uh, yeah, as you saw, I was having a little difficulty figuring out how to cut these, uh, figure it out, but man, it, it took a while. Um, just because I wanted to be as precise as I could, but what I did, because you know, with the hacksaw, it was the only way to really actually make a good clean cut was with the hacksaw. Take your time, uh, because the a little side grinder here with the cutting wheel. It just it heated this aluminum up so much that it just kind of burled up and melted. Kind of yeah, it did. It kind of melted it all together. So uh, that wasn't working. So what I did is I just kind of let me get another. One. Yeah. So what I did was I. I Clamp down in my little corner. I, I got these little squares that I made a long time ago. But anyway, I just clamp that down, and then I put another clamp to hold the material. And then I was able to cut, and it, it held it in place. So that's a good thing to keep in mind if you're going to be doing this. Uh, so I got all my pieces cut, and I took them to the trailer. You'll, You'll see pictures somewhere up here. Um, I've got the trim pieces cut to fit, but what I ended up having to do is, after I cut them, I went out there and I positioned them in place. And as I suspected, I had to trim off a little bit more on each end, just to kind of make it fit snug. Because I'd rather do that, cut a little bit wider, because you can always trim back to fit as you need. You can't add. Well, we could add a little, but I didn't want to caulk and you know put too much caulk I wanted a nice neat pretty even fit so uh, I had to come back and that's where my little side grinder worked well uh, I tried it on the bench grinder I wouldn't even I wouldn't even mess with that guy I did the because as a grind you have to be careful really careful trying to trying to maneuver the stock to fit the wheel and if you're not careful it'll, it'll catch because it's a coarse stone and it'll catch and uh, could lead to injury and not to mention it's going to bend your aluminum which it did for me a couple times before I figured it out that like, this is not what I need to do so I took this cutting wheel and uh, I clamped my pieces back in here again and I just took this cutting wheel and I just slowly worked it <clears throat> as I needed, you know, worked it back and I used my four inch, well, six inch uh, square just to kind of get my, to keep my 45 and I keep measuring it to get that. So it all worked out for that end. That's good. Um, so as you can see, I drilled my holes because that's what I did as well. Once I, once I had all the pieces on there, I marked where I wanted the holes uh, for the screws. <clears throat> so I drilled my holes and I've got a chamfer bit on my drill press. And so that's what I did. I had a stock. Where's my? So I had this stock that I actually placed. See, I put a line here. And I made, at first I chamfered the plywood. And then wherever I wanted a hole, or wherever I had, because I had my pilot hole drilled through the, the angle. So wherever my pilot hole was, I would line it up with this pencil mark that would just come down with the, with the chamfer bit. Worked great, but something to keep in mind is this, this aluminum that you buy at the big box stores or even probably at your local hardware store it's a soft aluminum it's, it's not 
I mean, it's one eighth thick. It's not a, I don't even think it's one eighth thick. It's like one sixteenth thick, yeah. So, it's really soft. And what was happening, I came back and I, I, what was happening is that chamfer bit would get plugged with all the, the melted aluminum. At first it was cutting nice, but then as the bit heated up and as this heated up, it just filled up the, the, the cutting grooves. So you had to sit there and pick them out and have a little, uh, I've got these little, it's made in China, but it works perfect. You know, it's like a little centering punch or something I call it, but I would actually clean out the grooves on the, uh, the chamfering bit. So, got these all chamfered out, but I was running, I don't know if you can see this too well. I'm gonna show you. Yeah, these are cleaned up, okay. So, these are done. These, Okay, I'll show you the difference between the two. Alright, so. Okay, so. As you can see, once you chamfer, smooth it out, it kind of heated up that aluminum and it just kind of pushed it through on all these, each one. So that did kind of interfere with, with, the, with the trim sitting flush on uh, the plywood edge or the box edge, doorway edge. So what I did is uh, took a hammer on that and, and, and beat it down and then tried grinding, just kind of buffing that off and then came back and chamfered it again to clean up the holes. And that did okay, but... What I ended up doing is you come back. I would I didn't even hammer it this on this neck one. So what I did is I just kind of took my little grinding wheel, my cutoff wheel, and I just kind of lightly brushed. As you can see, just a light brush to kind of take off some of that. And then I came back and I cleaned that up with the uh, chamfering bit, and it worked worked well. So. You know, to each your own, you might have a better idea of how to do that. Uh, but that works for me. So. so, that's what I'm going to do. Is I'll, uh, I'll clean up these for the, which door is this? This is, okay, these are the, these are the trim pieces for the side door. So I'll, uh, I'll clean up these pilot holes and all that, and then uh, I guess I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll clean up these pilot holes and I'll wipe everything down with maybe some some thinner. I, I don't know. Get them cleaned up and uh, you know do a little bit of sanding, filing where I need to, where this chamfer bit kind of push some out, just kind of smooth that down. Clean it up with some paint thinner. And then, uh, then I'll paint these up. I'm still, I'm still about 100% sure if I want to use the black paint or if I want to find something closer to the charcoal color. I, I, that is still to be determined. So, I'll let you know. Or actually, you'll see when I'm done which, one, which color I chose to go with. So, alright. Um... That is that. Okay, folks. So, uh, what I did, I ran to Tractor Supply. Um, I, I've cleaned the, the trim pieces with thinner, prepped them all. Uh, I had the black rust -oleum. But I ran to Tractor Supply to try and find something that I thought would match pretty close with the, uh, the charcoal that I was going to use for the, uh, the skin. And I found this Massey Ferguson Gray. It's from Rust-Oleum. Heavy duty, weather resistant, rust preventive. So 
I tried that. And the uh, just for anyone that's wondering, the the sheet metal that I'm going to use, the roofing material that I'm going to use, is a flat. It's a flat sheet. You know, it's like 41 inches and 9 16 wide by 10 feet 3 inches long. I spoke to uh, one guy. He said he would cut it to fit. He would cut the pieces to whatever I asked for. So that's probably what I'll do. But this here, it's it's. It's coated with uh, Ceramistar 1050, and it says here it's the industry's best silicone modified polyester coil coating system. Uh, has provided color protection to countless buildings and roofs, providing its exceptional durability and resistance to weathering. So, hopefully, that will do the trick and uh, last for many years to come. Uh, so, what I did though. I wanted you guys to see that is the, the gray color. That is it's charcoal. So I'm gonna put this right here. I think I've got a winner, folks. Let me get this camera off of the stance. It might be a little shaky. Sorry about that. So, I mean, to me, I don't know, it looks it looks better when it's not in the camera, but I don't know, it looks pretty good through the camera lens, too. Uh, this Massey Ferguson Gray looks like, I, I think it would be less in your face than the black trim. So... That's going to be the color of my trim uh, whenever I do get my pieces in. We'll see just how close it matches. You know how some of these brochures are. I mean, it's, it should be the same color as their sample page shows, you know. So, anyway, wow. That is a pretty close color match. I'm gonna go with that. I think, a, yeah. Anyhow, there's a, just a subtle difference in the shade. It's way, it's way less pow than the the black trim, which I didn't. I don't know. To me, I thought the black trim would look nice, but uh, it, it's gonna be too, yeah, it'd be too stark of a difference. That that would blend nicely. So. Alright folks, till next time.